Now we're going to record more costs, some of which will be product costs and some that will be period costs. So Gabriella's guitar shop records depreciation monthly. It's now the end of the month and the company needs to record $50 of depreciation on office equipment and $500 of plant depreciation. First, we'll record the depreciation on the office equipment. The depreciation on the office equipment, which is used in the support offices, is not a product cost because office equipment is not needed to make the products. So the journal entry will look like all the other depreciation transactions that we learned about in previous chapters. The depreciation is expensed in the period in which it is incurred, just like other period costs. The debit is depreciation expense on the office equipment for 50 bucks. This increases the expense account. And the credit is accumulated depreciation, office equipment, for $50. This is increasing this contra asset account. Now we need to record the $500 of depreciation on the factory equipment. Since the factory equipment is necessary to build the products, it's a product cost, not a period cost. So the depreciation cannot be expensed. Since it's a product cost, it has to be classified either as a direct cost or manufacturing overhead, which is an indirect cost. Since the factory equipment is used to make many different jobs, it's an indirect cost. Therefore, the $500 will increase manufacturing overhead with a debit. The full journal entry would look like this. Manufacturing overhead, a temporary expense account, is increased by $500. And accumulated depreciation for factory equipment, a contra asset, is increased by $500. Notice we did not expense the depreciation like we normally have done. This is because the factory depreciation is a product cost and cannot be expensed until the products are sold. At the end of the month, the $200 factory utility bill arrives. Since the bill is for the factory utilities, this will be a manufacturing overhead cost. Notice it increased manufacturing overhead with a $200 debit. The full journal entry for factory utilities being paid results in manufacturing overhead being debited for $200 and cash being credited for $200. Since it's the end of May, the company must enter the adjusting entry that shows that plant insurance has expired. To do this, we need to look at the January 1 transaction where they recorded purchasing prepaid insurance. So back on January 1st, the company paid $3,600 of prepaid insurance. So they debited, increased, the asset account called prepaid insurance. Notice they prepaid for 12 months. So $3,600 divided by 12 months means each month of insurance is worth $300. Now that we know how much one month of insurance represents, we can do the journal entry at the end of May to show that $300 of prepaid insurance has been used up. Notice the insurance is for the plant, so this would be a manufacturing overhead cost. So we would debit manufacturing overhead $300 and credit prepaid insurance $300. Notice this credit lowers the prepaid insurance by one month's worth of insurance since the company adjusts prepaid insurance monthly. The journal entry then gets posted to the T accounts and manufacturing overhead increases by $300 on the debit side. At the end of the month, the accountant at Gabriella's Guitar Shop receives a property tax bill for $400. This will be paid later. When doing the journal entry, the accountant figures that $400 of the $600 is for the factory. So this is an indirect product cost, therefore manufacturing overhead is debited for $400. The other $200 is allocated to the sales floor and support offices. So it's treated as a period cost and is expensed as property tax expenses. And because the bill will be paid later, the credit account is a liability account called property taxes payable. Keeping track of our T-accounts, we would post the $400 debit to manufacturing overhead. 
Of course, the other two accounts would also be posted, but we don't have room to show their T accounts. So now I've moved the journal entry out of the way, and we can see, as the blue box reminds us, that six actual costs have been debited or accumulated to the manufacturing overhead account. We've got $5 for indirect materials, $2,000 for indirect labor, $500 for plant depreciation, etc. Remember, this account is just a temporary account that's treated like an expense. The account temporarily holds the actual manufacturing overhead costs. Then later, when the jobs are finished, such as job 70, we need to take a portion of the manufacturing overhead costs and put them on job 70's cost record, which will increase the overall cost of job 70. This makes sense as job 70 should get some small portion of the glue, indirect labor, plant depreciation, and the other manufacturing overhead costs because they all contributed to helping build Job 70's guitar. Notice that manufacturing overhead does not include office rent or office depreciation, because those are period costs, not product costs. But how do we decide how much of manufacturing overhead is assigned to a job? Well, the bigger a job is, the more overhead costs are allocated to that job. And how do we measure a job size? Well, if a company builds a product that is labor intensive, such as guitars, they will likely use the number of direct labor hours or the total cost of direct labor to determine how much overhead is assigned to the job. If the product was machine intensive, in other words, the product is mostly built by machines and robots, then machine hours would likely be used to determine how much overhead is assigned to the job. Next, we'll discuss in detail how we determine how much overhead is allocated to job 70.